Large language models are scary. We literally taught rocks to multiply matrices, and boom, rocks can talk to you, gaslight you, pretend to be your girlfriend, and steal your job. But how did we even get here? What were the language models like before? Why were they so dumb and lame? And what has actually changed since then? First, let's rewind to June 2020, the start of GPT era. Back then, we already had these generative pre-trained transformers, GPT-1 and GPT-2. Basically, these models are neural networks trained to predict the next word in a sentence. They could generate some text, write basic poems, maybe complete a sentence or two, but that was pretty lame and useless. Then, OpenAI dropped their game changer, GPT-3, and it was massive. It had 175 billion parameters, over 100 times larger than GPT-2. It could write human-like essays. Humans could only tell the difference 52% of the time. It could generate working code, create HTML web pages, and even compose guitar tabs. But how that was possible? Turned out, it all came down to the scaling hypothesis. The idea was simple. Make it huge. Don't just make it a bit bigger. Make it over 100 times bigger. And with that trick, something magical happened. At this scale, the model suddenly developed abilities nobody programmed into it. It's developed zero-shot learning. When you ask it to do a task it was never trained for, and it could often do it correctly. And also, it got the thing called few-shot learning. That means, when you give it just a few examples of a new task, it somehow understands the pattern perfectly. And that was a crazy achievement. Now, one model could do almost everything. Meanwhile, before GPT-3, you had to always fine-tune models with thousands of examples for every single task to only make it work. GPT-3 has dramatically changed the meta. It led to all modern language models and all the AI hype you now see everywhere. That's why, 